Hi, welcome to iFlip for Math Math Cast Lesson 1-3. I'm Mrs. Gooding. Um, this lesson is over decimal place value and make sure that you write down the name of the lesson and the learning goal. Use decimal place value to write decimal numbers in standard and word form. Make sure you read that quote, it's a really good one. Um, also look, I'm wearing Mr. Rue's shirt for his new CD, so maybe you'll see him wearing it sometime and you can say that you've already seen it on your iFlip for Math website. Let's go ahead and begin our lesson. Here are your learning goals. I'm not going to read them to you anymore because now you've been watching long enough you know that they're glued in your journal. You need to read them through and kind of keep track of them in your journal as you've mastered them. Here again are your vocabulary terms. Make sure you pause and write them exactly as I've written them. We'll be going over them some more later. Okay, here's our decimal place value song that we've talked about for a couple of days. I'm going to be teaching you verse 2 today, which will teach you all of the place value positions on the decimal side. First, listen, I'll sing all of the, the whole number place value positions, the yellow, the green, and the blue. And then starting at the decimal, we're going to work our way to the right and sing those decimal place value positions. We're actually going to go further in the song than is on the chart because the chart lists what you need to know in fifth grade. But if you know the song, you're going to know more than the average fifth grader, which is really exciting. Let's go ahead and start the whole number side. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, hundred millions. That is place value, verse two. Decimal tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. Millionths, ten millionths, hundred millionths. That is place value. Rewind it and sing it again. Did you notice that at the end of each of those place value position names on the decimal side, you hear a fss? It almost takes a little bit more time to say and your tongue can get tripped up a little bit. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths. When you hear that fss, on the end, you know it comes to the right of the decimal. That makes it a lot easier to figure out which side of the decimal you're working on. Whole numbers just sound like the same numbers you've always heard. Decimal numbers will always have the THS ending. Okay, now that, you've, now that you know the song, go ahead and rewind it and play it one more time. Before you come to school, it would be great if you've got the song memorized. You do have to slow down on verse 2 because you're saying all those THS endings. It's a little bit tricky, but it's a lot of fun to sing together. We're going to learn, first of all, how to read a decimal number. Here's a hint. Remember when we were doing whole number place value and I said never use the word and? The and actually represents the decimal. So if you say and, you're putting a decimal where it doesn't belong unless you're actually reading the decimal. Here's another hint. On the decimal side, on that, on that side to the right of the decimal, read the decimal part of the number just as you would any whole number. Then whatever place value position the last digit is in, you're just going to say that place value position. It's kind of easy. It's kind of exciting to try. Let's see. If you're reading this number, and I'm going to let you look at that number, you would read 42. You read the whole number side just the same. The decimal, you say and, so you would say 42 and. And then the 36 that comes after the decimal ends in the hundredths place. If you sing the song starting at the decimal and working your way to the right, just verse 2, decimal, tenths, hundredths, See, the six ended in the hundredths place. So you would read that part of the number 36 hundredths. Let's see if you would read it just like this. Did you read it as 42 and 36 hundredths? If you did, you're picking up on this pretty quickly. Let's try some practice now. Practice reading decimals. Read this number. Go ahead and pause while you're reading it so that you don't hear me say the answer. 
Did you read 123 and 45 hundredths? That five is in the hundredths place. I'm going to look at the decimal. Decimal, tenths, hundredths. See, the five was in the hundredths place. So we would read that part, 45 hundredths. Don't forget, only say and when you see the decimal. And listen when I'm saying it, because you might catch me saying something wrong, and then I would owe you guys a push-up. Read this number. Pause while you read it. Did you read 123 and 45 thousandths? This time, the five is in the thousandths place. Look at the decimal. Decimal, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So the five ends in the thousandths place, so we read it 45 thousandths. We don't say that zero at all. If we were reading a whole number, we wouldn't say zero forty-five. So now we just say 45 thousandths. Writing decimal numbers in word form. Did you notice that all of the answers on reading decimal numbers were actually written in word form? So if we are reading a decimal number, we can write it exactly as we read it. That's cool. Rewind it and check it out. Now write this number in word form. Remember, there should be no digits in word form. Every single digit has to be written out in words. Pause while you write it. Did you write 70 and 403 ten thousandths? The three is in the ten thousandths place. Let's start at our decimal. Decimal, tenths, hundreds, thousandths, ten thousandths. See, the three is in the ten thousandths place. I don't read that zero again, so all I read is 403 ten thousandths. Now we're going to write some decimal numbers in standard form. This is just the reverse of what we just did. When we write decimal numbers, you're just going to make sure that the number ends in the place value position that's written in the word form. If we write this number in standard form, 16 and 34 hundredths, we know that the 34 is going to end in the hundredths place. Did you write 16 decimal 34? When we read that, we say 16 and 34 hundredths, just like we wrote it in word form. It may be helpful for you to draw out the place value position lines. Okay, we are going to write the number 16 and 34 hundredths. So I write the 16 just like a regular whole number. 16 and tells me to write a decimal. And then I hear 34 hundredths, so I'm going to sing the place value song while I mark out my place value positions. Decimal, tenths, hundredths. So I know I have two place value positions after the decimal. And I have two numbers to put in it because I'm reading 34 hundredths. 34, my four ends in the hundredths place. That was easy. This time, when you write 4 and 32 thousandths, draw out the place value position lines to make sure you put those digits in the correct place. Then push play and see if you wrote them correctly. Did you write 4 and 32 thousandths? We had to put a zero as a placeholder in there to make sure that our 2 ended in the thousandths place. Let me show you how I did that now. Okay, now we're going to write the number 4 and 32 thousandths. So we write our 4, 4 and 32 thousandths. Hmm, let's sing our, our decimal place value song, verse 2. Decimal, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So I know that my 32 has to end in this last place value position. That means I'll have to write it right here. That definitely says 32 thousandths. I'll just fill a zero in as a placeholder. If I had written it four and, here's my three, place value positions, 32 thousandths, that doesn't read 32 thousandths, does it? It reads four and 320 thousandths. 
We don't want to do that. Let's get rid of that one. So there's our correct answer. Oops. Four and thirty-two thousandths. Equivalent decimals. Equivalent means equal. If there are zeros at the right end of a decimal, they do not add any value at all, but they do change the way we write the decimal number. We read that number 0 0.8 as 8 tenths. We read 0 0.80 as 80 hundredths. We read 0 0.800 as 800 thousandths. Because the zeros are there, we have to read them that way. So we can't just look at a number like 0 decimal 800 and say 8 tenths because they have written the two zeros following it, which means they want it represented as 800. The 800 ends in the thousandths place, so we would say 800 thousandths. Notice something else. We don't say 0 and 8 tenths. Whenever we have a value of zero, we don't say it. Just like if you were going to the store, you wouldn't say, I'm going to buy two gallons of milk, four things of cheese, and zero loaves of bread. If you're not going to buy any, you don't say it. Zero is, has no value, so we just leave it out. If you look above at those three different decimal numbers, 8 tenths, 80 hundredths, and 800 thousandths, they all represent the exact same amount. 8 out of 10 parts is the same amount of one whole, or the same part of one whole, as 80 out of 100 parts, and 800 out of 1,000 parts. If this is hard for you to visualize, when you come to class tomorrow, we're going to be doing some exercises where we shade in some hundreds charts so you can really see what each of those decimals is representing amount-wise. So 8 tenths is equivalent to 80 hundredths, which is also equivalent to 800 thousandths. If this is hard for you, you can also cross off the zeros at the right end of the decimal or add zeros if there are less digits, and it will make it easier for you to compare them. Okay, I want to show you how 8 tenths, 80 hundredths, and 800 thousandths really are the same. When we're reading a decimal number, or writing a decimal number, because and is always a connecting word, we would never say, and it was great. We would always say, I went to the fair, and it was great. So since and always connects something, we always write a zero in front of and if there are no whole number positions, or whole number digits, excuse me. So, in this case, we're writing 8 tenths, then we're writing 80 hundredths, and here we're going to write 800 thousandths. When we're looking at all three of these and we want to know if they're equal, we can always either cross out all of these zeros at the end. Remember, zeros at the right end of a place value position number on decimal side don't have any value, so we can cross them out. Now we are looking at 8 tenths, 8 tenths, and 8 tenths. We can also, let's erase our little cross outs. Uh, I'll just rewrite that. We can also add zeros in to look at them. See how I'm just filling zeros in so that I have the same number of place value positions filled in? I didn't change the value because adding a zero to the end doesn't change the value. This is still the exact same amount. Picture 8 out of 10 parts. It's going to be the same whether it's 80 hundredths or 800 thousandths. It's still going to look like 8 out of 10 parts are shaded in. I could even add zeros all the way across and nothing changes. I haven't changed the value at all. But it does help me compare them and see that they are equivalent. When we are trying to express value in decimal numbers, it's even easier than in whole numbers. 
you just say the name of the digit and then add the place value position name where it's located. That's easy. What is the value of the 6 in 45 and 856 thousandths? Pause it and write it down. There are two correct ways to write this. Did you write 6 thousandths? That's not exactly word form because the 6 is a digit not written in words, but it is an easier way to express it. 6 thousandths. You could also have written 0 decimal 006. The 6 is in the thousandths place, so it expresses the value 6 thousandths. Remember when we did value in whole numbers and we replaced digits before the decimal with zeros? It's the same way after the decimal. You replace those digits with zeros. Let's do some value practice. What is the value of the 9 in 3 and 193 thousandths? Pause it so you can write it down. Did you write 9 hundredths or 0 decimal 09? Those are both red, 9 hundredths, so either way you wrote them would be correct. What is the value of the 3 in 65 and 300 thousandths? Pause it so you can write it down. Did you write 3 tenths or 0 decimal 3? Remember, either one of those is a correct way to represent the value of that 3. This lesson has gone pretty quickly. I hope that you've really kept track of what's hard for you and what you've mastered using your learning goal chart. Now it's time to challenge yourself. Use the clues to identify each number. Write your answers in standard form and word form. Remember, in standard form, you're only using digits, and in word form, you're only using words to represent the digits. Number one, this number is the same as 31 and 880 thousandths. Think about our equivalent fractions. Number two, this number is 500 thousandths less than 2 and 845 thousandths. This is a tricky one. Think about it. Then go ahead and write the answers in your journal and check them with me when you get to school tomorrow. In finishing up, again, we're going back and figuring out what do we need to rewatch, what do we need to repractice. Do we need to ask any questions when we get to class tomorrow? Make sure if you have any questions, you write them down in your journal. We're going to go over them as soon as you come to class. Woohoo! You finished you finished lesson 1-3 decimal place value. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. See you tomorrow.